Oh God, you're good and your mercy and your way. Thank you for knowing that you are in control. All powers are in your hands. And God, you're able to speak and move all adverse situations yes. in our lives. And we say thank you. We pray for all the bereaved families. We pray for those who are incarcerated. God, that you keep them in the mind. Oh God, the state of the world. We pray for our presidents. We pray for our Congress and all of our political leaders. Oh God, that you would give them wisdom to govern and lead your people with God and wisdom. We thank you for all things. Bless us and keep us, God, receive our worship. Let your Holy Spirit abide with us and let all that we do today be pleasing in your sight and that it be a spiritual uplift for your people. God, we just thank you. Have mercy upon us and keep us in our prayer. We pray for all of our brothers and sisters, our churches, in this community and outside that are opening their doors. We pray that they do so with God and wisdom and that you will protect them as the people of God. Thank you for all things. It's in the name of Jesus and of Christ we pray. Amen. God bless you. Certainly thank God again for all this blessing. We know since the last time we've come together, there's been so much that happened in the world. But God has kept us safe. Amen. And we are grateful for that. We realize that He didn't have to do it, but He did. And we just thank God for all of His multitude of blessings that He has bestowed upon us. We're grateful again to have our Amen. Our portion of our uh, choir, amen, singers and musicians, we're grateful for them uh, coming each week to share uh, with us the songs of praise, and uh, we appreciate what they are doing, and we pray God's blessings be upon them. At this time, we're going to hear from a musician and our singers at this time.
good to be on the Lord's side. Oh, yeah. Good to be a soldier yeah. in the army of the Lord. Amen. Certainly we enjoy. Amen. Those two selections. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Amen. Amen. To our singers and musicians on today doing a great job. Certainly yes. thank God for Amen. For the family and the service that might go out to uh, our members and others. Amen. Certainly we thank God for all that you're doing. Amen. You know, these are the days in which we live and uh, we just have to make the best out of, and you know, sometimes people say making the best out of a bad situation, but I don't know whether uh, it's a bad. Of course, the uh, pandemic uh, certainly a bad uh, situation where the church finds itself at being uh, closed down to an extent. I don't know whether that's really a bad situation. Seems like it just puts us in a position where the Lord always uh, wanted his church to be. And that's outside of the four walls and providing uh, ministry Amen. Uh, to multitudes of people that we wouldn't normally reach in doing our just Sunday morning uh, services. And so we thank God for that opportunity. You know, um, we're reaching people amen, uh, outside of our area. Amen. People that might not uh, ever step in a church and be reached through uh, Facebook and YouTube. Psalms chapter 11. 
in the Lord put I my trust. How safe to my soul. Flee as a bird to your mountain. For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrows upon the string that they may privately shoot at the upright in the heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. Psalm 11, 1 through 4. And I want to talk today from that passage of scripture, this thought in mind, really somewhat of a question. If <coughs> the bottom falls out, Amen. Trusting God in uncertain times. Amen. Amen. If the bottom falls out. Amen. Trusting God. You know, these are uncertain times Amen. in which we live. And as believers, we trust God in these uncertain times. The thing for this psalm, this 11th number of psalm, God rule provides stability in the midst of panic. God's rule provides stability in the midst of panic. Because we can trust Him, we can face our problems. And, you know, uh, this pandemic this coronavirus has a lot of people uh, hanging on the edge. Yeah. And it's sad to say, a lot of Christians, amen, just hanging on, hanging by the edge. Yeah. Amen. Uh, in our text, David seems to be speaking to those who are advising him to run from his enemies. David's faith contrasts drastically with the fear of the advisors who tell him to flee. Listen. Faith in God keeps us from losing hope and helps us resist fear. David's advisors were afraid because they saw only frightening circumstances and crumbling foundations. David was confident and optimistic because he knew God was greater than anything his enemy could bring against him. When the foundations are shaken and you wish you could hide, remember that God is still in control. And during this pandemic, we need to remember, as 
Christians that God is still in control. And his power is not diminished by any turn of events. So when you feel like running away, sometimes in life there are things amen, are so devastating that we feel like running away. Well, run to God. He will restore justice and goodness on the earth. Look, in his own good time. The focus stretch here. Says, if the foundations of a godless society are destroyed, what can the righteous Amplified Bible reads, all the foundations of the earth, the fundamental principles of the administration of justice are shaken. Amen. And I don't know about you, but as I look around today in the world in which we live, Amen. I can see and can sense and feel the foundations shake. Amen. Psalm 82 and 5 speaks of the whole world as being shaken to the core. That core is the central part. The most important part. And I don't know whether you realize it or not. But it seems to me, and I say it seems to me, that the foundations of our beloved country yeah. is being shaken. Well. Seem to be crumbling. And if things continue to go as they are going, yeah, yeah. our very foundation will be destroyed. Amen. I said it seems like to me that things are coming apart at the same. Things that we thought was sad. Amen. Years ago or being questioned today. You know, I got it. Amen. Amen. In the year of 1965, yeah. President Lyndon Bain Johnson signed into law the Voting Rights Act. Yeah. We thought that was sad. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We thought that was a done deal. Yeah. But now, 55 years later, we have a president that's trying, you might as well say, trying to appeal the Voting Rights Act. Not only affecting people of color, but all people. Amen. All people who uh, he don't feel is going to vote for him. He showed that they wouldn't vote at all. And we've seen it all through the news, the taking up of, of, of local mailboxes and making it hard for people in rural areas to a vote. We've seen all of that. Hell, I got to do this. And I can tell you that the foundation is being shaken. 
Have I got a witness? The foundation is being Listen, let me talk about it. The foundations of our democracy. Now look, I'm, on, I'm preaching the gospel. But the Bible told us to watch as well as to pray. And you need to be paying attention Amen. to what's going on in the world around you. Have a God. Amen. I said, let me say that again. As Christians, we need to be paying attention. Don't know. Don't, I heard a, uh, even a preacher tell me somebody he don't watch the news. And I think, well, that ain't nothing to be bragging uh, about. Because you need to watch the news so you can see what's going on around you. And, and you can see how this Bible is fulfilling itself. Hello, God. The foundation. Of our democracy, yeah. as we know it, is being shaken. Well, let me just take the time to go. Listen, whenever a man, a gun, now I believe we have maybe one or two veterans in here, whenever the government can put a bounty on America, Soldiers. And you have a president and a Republican Congress that seem not to be concerned. Hell got me. Our democracy is shaking. I remember the time I saw President, uh, what that song said, this means war. Hell got me. Amen. Our democracy and then can interfere with our elections. Our foundation of our democracy is being shaped. Have I got a witness on that? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Listen. Our economical foundation is being shaken. I don't know what's the latest number, but I heard it a few days ago, and it was staggering the number of people who are unemployed. Have I got a witness? Jobs that are closed. Have I got a witness? Our economy, amen, is being shaken. Amen. Some of us can feel it. Have a God. I said some of us can can feel it. Have a God. Yes, and our educational foundation is being shaped. Children are not in school. Young folk are not in college. Mm -hmm. And I think I heard uh, the vice president elect say that we know, amen, that this at home thing is really not working. Amen. 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 Children need to be. In school, of course, we know that right now it's not safe for children to be in school. They need to, but it's, it's not safe now. Amen. And don't you think we need to pray? Don't you think that this is not going to have an adverse effect on these young people? Their future. Have a God of it. Their social development. Amen. Amen. Most of them, my little granddaughters, uh, uh, they talk about how they miss school. 
They miss their friends. Help me out of here. And I think most children miss school. Amen. They should be a school to be sitting at home. Amen. So our educational foundation is being shaken. And then our moral foundation is big yeah. shit. Yeah. See, like people have lost all sense yeah. of right yeah. and wrong yeah. and just common decency. Amen. Amen. Our moral foundation is big yeah. shit. And then our social justice system is being shaken. Whenever we can witness on television a white police, well, I just might as well call it like it was a, a white police with three more white police. Right around him can put his knee on the neck of an unarmed black man and snuff his life out while he looks into a telephone camera of a young girl. How they got it? Our social, our system of social justice is being shit. And you know, I go down the list on that, all of the killings and amen. And then finally, let me stop here. Our religious beliefs are being tested and shit. I've been talking to quite a few pastors and I've had something to say to me, you know, when this thing is over, there's going to be a number of churches not going to open back up. Now they got to do They're not going to open back up. Amen. It'll be like starting all over with them because many of them that people didn't have the discipline of giving. Now they got to do Amen. Yes. The foundations of being shaped. And I don't know about you, but I can feel it. I can see it. All around me. In the text, the question is asked. Amen. The question is asked in the text if the foundation be Destroy. See, many times things shake first. Then they crumble. Amen. Then there's destruction. Hell of a Now, some Bibles don't say if. Some translations say when. Indicating that it's going to happen. And according to our Bible, it is going to happen. If you follow our scripture reading uh, on the day, you find out Peter said it's going to happen. Help God with His day said, If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? He didn't say, What can the world do? What can the sinners do? Amen. But what can the righteous do? Well, we can do as David said he was going to do. Amen. When his friends tried to talk him into running off, hide. Amen. David said that he was going to trust in God. How many of y'all will trust him? 
Gospel. What else could we do? The righteous. But to continue to trust in God. How we got to win? Because I heard Jesus say through the Apostle Paul. If when this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have another building. And it's eternal in the heavens. Have I got a witness? Amen. So I tell you what we're going to do. Have mercy, Lord. If we have to live with this body, we're going to trust in the Lord. How many of y'all want to trust in the Lord? Have a lot of Amen. If the foundation be destroyed, have mercy, Lord. I tell you what we're going to do. Hold to God's unchanging hands. And we're going to build our hopes on things eternal. And we're just going to hold on. And that's what we encourage you today, my sisters and brothers. Amen. I know we're living in some difficult times. And there are some who have not been walking with Christ for long. Amen. And we want to encourage you. Amen. To trust Him. And to continue to hold on to God's unchanging. Like the song said, time is filled with swift transition. And we see it today. If it's not one thing, it's another. What is it saying now? There's a hurricane. Amen. Come. Amen. Amen. If the pandemic is not enough, Hospitals are full. Now we have hurricane threats. It's time to see the swift transition. Not on earth, a move, stand. Fill your hopes on things eternal. And just hold on to God's unchanging love. Amen. But let me tell you this as we close. Amen. There's coming a time that everything or every person that's not anchored in Christ will be shaken. Tell the God. That's the folks today. They are. This thing have been shaken. Because they are not anchored in Christ. But when you are anchored in Christ, you don't have to fear coronavirus, any other virus, when you are anchored in Christ. Hell, God, we Amen. Amen. Because in Him, we have an anchor. Amen. That will hold and grip that solid rock. And that rock is Jesus. And so, my brothers and sisters, Amen. Those of you that are in Christ Jesus, continue to trust Him. Continue to trust.
trust him and stand on his word. Don't be shaken. Don't be troubled by what you see going on around you. Our God is in control. And that same day that wrote these words, I've been young and not old. Yet have I not seen the righteous to say, nor have seen big bread. God is going to take care of his people. Have I got a minute? And so to those of you that might be hearing my voice that know not Christ as your Savior. Amen. Amen. Let me say it like this. You don't know what you're missing. Amen. 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 I know you might think that you have the good times in the world. Amen. But if you're without Christ, you don't know what you are missing outside of Christ. The joy you're missing and the peace he brings into the life of the believer. Amen. And so as you hear my voice, know not Christ as your personal and you might have tried for many things and found all of them to fail we want to admonish you and encourage you to try Jesus try Jesus he won't fail and he will make a difference in your life. You need him. And if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, amen, you can know him today. Just simply, amen, you can fall on your knees, amen, you can stand up and just humble your hearts and say, Lord, I am a sinner. I confess. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and receive me unto yourself as your child. And if you confess with your mouth that you are a sinner and believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins, that he rose for your justification, if you can believe that, the Bible said, Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Thou shalt be saved. I think I said this last week, and I'll say it again. If you should die and your soul be lost, it's nobody's fault but yours. Because God has made it perfectly plain in His Word that He's willing, He's ready. Amen. To save sinners. He said, it's not my will that any should perish. That word perish means that it's not my will that any should be lost. So if you be lost, you can't blame nobody but yourself. Time is winding up. Amen. Now I know who I'm talking to, but I'm going to talk to somebody. And you need to realize you're not getting any younger, even though age don't have nothing to do with it. Amen. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And then it might be someone who was in the church, brought up in church. And you have wandered away from the shepherd's fold. You left the church. And you keep saying in your mind, I'm going to get back in church. If I'm talking to you, this is your mind fine time. Look, 
You can get back to church without the church being open. Amen. Amen. Because we're really talking about a being in Christ Jesus. Amen. Not a physical building. Amen. And I heard him say that I'm married to the backslide. He said, you might have left me, but I didn't leave you. And he wants you to know that you can come back home and he'll receive you. Amen. So, amen. Think about this. Do what you know you need to do and what the Spirit is doing. God bless you. So we continue to pray for all of our friends, all of our members, every person on the prayer list, we want you to know that we are praying for you. And to those members who might be hearing me or non-members that might be listening, that might want to be a part of our Bible studies and, uh, and want some information, so you can contact the church and we'll be happy to have you join us on Wednesday nights in our Bible studies. And if you have uh, capability to get online if you send us an email address or whatever, we will also send you a uh, our lesson. Amen. 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 We'll send it to your line. You can join in with us on Wednesdays at 6 30 on Zoom as we do our weekly Bible study. Amen. God bless you and God will keep you is our prayer. Let us receive the benediction and now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit rest through the body of us henceforth now and forever. Let every heart say, Amen. 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 Amen.